Large Feature Comics, Series 1, Number 8, November 1939, published by Dell Comics. Dick Tracy in the Racket Buster is the feature in this Chester Gould cover. This comic was printed in black and white with dimensions of 8.5 by 11 and a third inches. The first nine issues of this series were printed newsprint with heavy, rough stock. The Racket Buster is the title of the Dick Tracy cover feature drawn by Chester Gould, and the entire issue is dedicated to the Dick Tracy strip. There are 71 pages written and drawn by Chester Gould featuring Dick Tracy and Pat Patton. And this is reprinted from the Dick Tracy newspaper comic strips from May to November 1938, heavily edited with many panels omitted. Funny Pages, Volume 3, Number 9, November 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue went on sale September 27, 1939. There is a mile-high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Diana Dean in Hollywood is featured on the cover, drawn by Tarp Mills. The superhero The Arrow is featured in a six-page strip. Diane Dean in Hollywood appears in a four-page story from Tarp Mills. And there's a promotional ad for Amazing Man Comics. Amazing Mystery Funnies, Volume 2, Number 11, November 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue went on sale October 5th, 1939. This issue features a robot cover by Frank Thomas and Phantom of the Fair. It's a superhero slash robot cover. Catastrophe Strikes at the Electrical Utilities Area at the World's Fair is the title of the eight-page Phantom of the Fair strip, written and drawn by Paul Gustafson in his early superhero strip, featuring the Phantom of the Fair and the Brain of the Robot. In the Electric Utilities Area of the World's Fair, a giant electro-robot goes on a rampage. This story would be reprinted in Phantom Man number 3 in 1940. Daredevil Barry Finn is a six-page strip drawn by Tarp Mills featuring Barry Finn and Joan Hart. The Hidden Empire Part 3 is the title of the seven-page Don Dixon story written by Bob Moore with art by Carl Fufer in this early science fiction comic strip. Runaway Rocket Ship is the title of a two-page text story written by Lloyd Victor. It's a science fiction strip featuring Speed and Mike Riley, and also it contains a Rocketways system. It is the year 2009 AD is the title of the John Linton Flyer Scientist Adventure eight-page strip written and drawn by Harry Francis Campbell. It's an early aviation slash science fiction comic book strip featuring John Linton the Scientist. The Strange Creature, Half Man, Half Horse, is the title of the nine-page Speed Centaur story, drawn by Malcolm Kildale. It's an early superhero comic book strip featuring Speed Centaur and the villain Dickie the Dunce. Keen Detective Funnies, Volume 2, Number 11. November 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This issue went on sale September 27th, 1939. It features Bill Everett art. There's a mile-high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. Dean Denton, Mystery of the Missing Submarine, is the cover feature drawn by Harry Francis Campbell. The Masked Marvel appears in a 12-page strip written and drawn by Ben Thompson and would be reprinted in Masked Marvel No. 2 in 1940. Satan Takes a Holiday is the title of the seven-page Jeb Tinker strip drawn by Arthur Hoffman. Jeb and LaRue get tangled up in a case involving $40,000 in the basement and a gangster who calls himself Satan. This story would be reprinted in Wham! Comics number 2 in 1940. This issue features a promo ad for Amazing Man Comics. Single Series number 12, November 1939, published by United Features Syndicate, features Joe Jinx in the 64-page special. Joe Jinx is a newspaper strip originally published in 1918 and distributed by United Features Syndicate, created by Vic Forsyth. Joe Jinx is the feature of the entire issue. Written and drawn by Vic Forsyth, we also get Divot Diggers, 12 pages worth, also written from Vic Forsyth. It's a golf humor, as well as Fussy Foursome, seven pages, also written and drawn by Vic Forsyth in this issue. Crackerjack Funnies, number 17, November 1939, published by Dell Comics. Clyde Beattie is featured on the cover. The editor at Dell was Oscar Lebeck. 
Tarzan, Red Rider, Wash Tubs, Don Winslow, Tom Mix, Dan Dunn, and many other comic strips appear in this popular title. Action Comics number 18, November 1939, published by DC Comics. This is the last non-Superman cover of this title. This issue went on sale September 25th, 1939. The editor at DC was Vincent Sullivan. The cover art is by Fred Gardiner. Superman is featured in a 13-page story called Superman's Super Campaign, written by Jerry Siegel, with art by Paul Cassidy, using the alias Joe Schuster. This early superhero is appearance is also one of Superman's early appearances, featuring Clark Kent, Lois Lane, Gene Powers, still the unnamed George Taylor, Senator Hastings, the villain Trixie, and Hamilton, who is the editor of the Morning Herald and also a villain. Superman investigates and halts the activities of a yellow journalist editor who is blackmailing noted officials. The last panel of the strip features the cover and ad for New York World's Fair Comics for 1939. Pep Morgan is a six-page strip written by Gardner Fox with art by Fred Gardiner under the alias Gene Baxter. The Cult of the Tiger Part 2 is the title of the six-page Clip Carson strip written by Bill Finger with art by Bob Kane. The Return of the Gora Part 2 is the title of a ten-page Tex Thompson adventure story drawn by Bernard Bailey. features the villain The Gora. The Captured Plains is the titles of the six-page Three Aces story drawn by Bert Christman, featuring the first appearance and origin of the Three Aces, who are Fog Fortune, Gunner Bill, and Whistler Will. The Atlantis Mystery is the title of the 11-page Zitara Master Magician story written by Gardner Fox and art by Fred Gardiner. Once again this month, Action Comics was the best-selling continuous month-to-month -month comic book series on the newsstands. Only this month was Marvel Comics number one outselling it. Super Comics number 18, November 1939, published by Dell Comics. The editor at Dell at this time was Oscar Lebeck. There is a file copy from Dell Comics existing of this issue. The cover is drawn by Bill Holman. Dick Tracy appears in a three-page story written and drawn by Chester Gould. And Milt Caniff writes and draws four pages of Terry and the Pirates. Comics on Parade, number 20, November 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. Tarzan, Lil Abner, Abby and Slats, and Bronco Bill are some of the highlights of this issue, which was one of the best-selling comic books month-to-month -month on the newsstands. Feature Comics, number 26, November 1939, published by Quality Comics. The editor at Quality at this time was Ed Cronin. Bungle Family is featured on the cover, drawn by Ed Cronin. Off the Record is featured in its last appearance, written and drawn by Ed Reed. Rube Goldberg's Sideshow is a two-page story, written and drawn by Rube Goldberg. The Clock appears in a five-page story, written and drawn by George E. Brenner, in this early superhero story, featuring Brian O'Brien as The Clock, and the first appearance of the villain, Fingers Holtz. Reynolds of the Mounted is a four-page story written and drawn by Art Panagin. It features the first appearances of the villains Red Hawk and Paul Sanders. The Hedron Goldmine Mystery Part 2 is the title of the nine-page Charlie Chan story written and drawn by Alfred Andriola, featuring the classic character Charlie Chan. Ace Comics, number 32, November 1939, published by David McKay Publications. The Cats and Jammer Kids are featured on the cover, drawn by Joe Musial. There is a Lost Valley pedigree copy of this book. Jungle Jim appears in four pages, drawn by Alex Raymond. Prince Valiant appears in four pages, drawn by Hal Foster. The Phantom appears in a four-page story, written by Lee Falk, with art by Ray Moore of the classic superhero. Detective Comics, number 33, November 1939, published by DC Comics. Printed here for the first time in comics is Batman's Origin, a tale that would influence legions of superheroes created during the Mad Dash of 1940. The Caped Crusader's fourth cover appearance ever has him strapping on a gun, a rare sight for the character who would rather use his wits, gadgets, and fists to bring in the bad guys. There is an Allentown pedigree copy of this book. This issue officially went on sale September 30th, 1939. The editor at the time at DC was Vincent Sullivan. The Batman is featured on the cover, drawn by Bob Kane. 
The Batman Wars Against the Dirigible of Doom is the title of the 12-page Batman story written by Bill Finger and Gardner Fox with art by Bob Kane with backgrounds drawn by Sheldon Moldoff in this early classic superhero issue. Bruce Wayne features his origin as Batman and this story also features the death of of Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne, plus the unnamed villain Joe Chill and Professor slash Dr. Carl Kruger. After an account of how the Batman came into being as a crime fighter, Batman becomes alarmed at the sudden appearance of deadly dirigibles whose occupants wish to rule the world. The story would be reprinted in Batman number one in 1940. The story contains a two-page origin sequence, the original origin, written by Bill Finger, and the Batman carries and uses a gun in this story. Odds and Ends is a one-page story written and drawn by Sheldon Moldoff. It's a biographical sports strip featuring Charlie Ruffing and Pop Warner. Spy appears in six pages written by Jerry Siegel with art by Mart Bailey in his adventure spy strip featuring Bart Regan and Carl Palchek. Speed Saunders' Ace Investigator continues in six pages from artist Fred Gardiner. And Slam Bradley returns in 10 pages, written by Jerry Siegel, with art by Mart Bailey, featuring Slam Bradley and Shorty Morgan. The Funnies, number 37, November 1939, published by Dell Comics. The star of this book is Edgar Rice Burroughs' John Carter of Mars, and other features include Alley Oop and the flying ace known as Sky Ranger. The editor at this time is Dell Comics was Oscar Labeck. John Carter is featured on the cover drawn by John Coleman Burroughs in this early science fiction superhero cover. John Carter, Chained in the Palace Dungeon is the title of the four-page story with a script based on a writing from Edgar Rice Burroughs with adaptation and art by John Coleman Burroughs. The Crime Busters appears in six pages from artist Al McWilliams in this crime story, which features the first appearance, likely in comics, of Folsom Prison. Rex King of the Deep is six-page story, written by Gaylord Dubois under the alias Albert Hardsty, with art by Al McWilliams. The Big Iron Gate is the title of the four-page The Wonderland of Oz story based on the original writing of L. Frank Baum with adaptation from writer-artist Walt Spouse. Features the characters The Shaggy Man, Ojo, Patchwork Girl, The Scarecrow, Glass Cat, Woozy, and The Sawhorse. And this is copyright 1933, Riley and Lee, but is an adaptation of The Patchwork Girl of Oz by L. Frank Baum from 1913. Mr. District Attorney appears in a four-page story, likely drawn by Erwin Hess in this crime story, copyright to Phillips Lord, 1939. Tip Top Comics, number 43, November 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. This book features a Tarzan cover and eight pages of Tarzan strips. There's a Mort Walker panel. Captain and the Kids, Little Abner are also highlights of this issue. And there's a Rockford pedigree copy of this book. King Comics, number 43, November 1939, published by David McKay Publications. Popeye is featured on the cover with a ship in the bottle. There's a Lost Valley pedigree copy of this book. Adventure Comics, number 44, November 1939, published by DC Comics. This issue went on sale October 3rd, 1939. The editor at DC at the time was Vincent Sullivan. This is the third Sandman cover and the first to show the character in his familiar popular green suit. There is a Larson pedigree copy of this book, as well as a Mile High pedigree copy from the Edgar Church Collection. The Sandman is featured on the cover in this early superhero cover, drawn by Craig Flessel. The Sandman Meets the Face is the title of the 10-page The Sandman Story, written by Gardner Fox under the alias Larry Dean, with art by Craig Flussell, in this early superhero strip featuring Wesley Dodds as the Sandman. It also features the first appearance and death of the villain, The Face. The near victim of an old friend turned crook, Wes Dodds, watches him shot dead by the face, then changes to the Sandman to discover why the villain had it in for the young victim. Wes Dodds revealed to have lived in Hilltown as a boy, and this is the first Sandman in the green suit. Federal Man is the four-page story written by Jerry Siegel with art by Mart Bailey in the detective mystery which features the first appearances of Mr. Fletcher and Mrs. Clayton. 
Mystery in London is a two-page text story written by Gardner Fox under the alias Paul Dean. The Menace of Chen Fu, Part 4, is the title of the four-page Rusty and His Pal strip written and drawn by Bob Kane featuring the villain Chen Fu. And Codden Carver is a six-page story written by Gardner Fox with art by Ogden Whitney. Popular Comics, number 45, November 1939, published by Dell Comics. The Hurricane Kids are featured on the cover. The editor at the time at Dell Comics was Oscar Lebeck, with George Delacorte Jr. as president, Helen Meyer as vice president, J. Fred Henry also as vice president, and Margarita Delacorte as the secretary. The cover of The Hurricane Kids features the character Alan Burnham. John West, a hardened old criminal, is the title of the six-page Gangbusters story drawn by Al McWilliams, and the story would be reprinted in Four Color Comics number 7, featuring the Gangbusters in 1940. The Mystery of Mr. Wong, Part 3, is the title of the six-page Mr. Wong story drawn by Tom Hickey. It's an adaptation of the Monogram Pictures movie, The Mystery of Mr. Wong, starring Boris Karloff. And Tex Ritter appears in a six-page Western Frontier story, features the singing movie star Cowboy, an adaptation of the Monogram Pictures movie, The Man from Texas, starring Tex Ritter. More Fun Comics, number 49, November 1939, published by DC Comics. This issue went on sale September 28, 1939. The editor at DC at the time was Vincent Sullivan. Craig Flussell did the cover artwork. There is a mile-high pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. There is also a cosmic aeroplane pedigree copy. Starlight is a short half-page story written and drawn by Sheldon Moldoff, a biographical page. Introducing King Carter is six pages of King Carter written and drawn by Paul Loretta, featuring the first appearance of King Carter. Dr. Kilman of Castle Terror, Part 7, is the title of the five-page Buccaneer strip, written and drawn by Bernard Bailey. And Dr. Kilman dies in this strip. The Gurney Brothers is the title of the six-page Radio Squad strip, written by Jerry Siegel with art by Mart Bailey, featuring the characters Larry Trent and Sandy Keane. And The Phantom of the Pyramids is the title of a six-page Bulldog Martin story written and drawn by Bart Toomey, featuring the first appearance of a character called The Phantom, not the same Phantom who's already been published in comic strips. Mickey Mouse Magazine, number 50, volume 5, number 2, November 1939, published by Western Publishing. This historic 50th issue, it's the second comic book to ever reach 50 monthly issues and the first comic slash magazine format to ever reach 50 issues. Goofy is featured on this Halloween cover. There's the first brief appearance ever of Pinocchio in this issue, which went on sale October 13th, 1939. The second comic-related series ever to reach 50th issue and the first Disney-related. Famous Funnies, number 64, November 1939, published by Eastern Color. Still the longest-running comic book series so far in history. The editor at this time at Eastern Color was Stephen Douglas. The cover art is by Victor Pazmino, featuring the characters Uncle LB, Pigtails, and Gusto in a funny sports football cover. Buck Rogers appears in a four-page story written by Philip Francis Nolan with art by Rick Yeager under the alias Dick Kelkins in the early classic science fiction strip. Lightning and the Lone Rider is a two-page story drawn by Jack Kirby in one of his earliest strips under the alias Lance Kirby in this western story. And Jerry Iger gives us a one-page humor strip, Queenie, which he wrote and drew. Famous Funnies was not only the longest-running comic still on the newsstands, but still the second best-selling non-superhero comic book on the newsstands month-to-month. Still very popular. 